So what is fear anyway? It is a state of being, an emotion that signals a red flag to our body. It tries to protect us from harm, whether that be physical or emotional. Back in the day, cavemen feared being eaten by a cave lion as they were hunting and gathering for their families. Today, we have evolved to fear more superficial things, not necessarily with putting our bodies on the line, but things like not having enough money, not getting the job we want, failing at something, fear of looking stupid, fear of being judged, and the fear of getting sick, the last one being more physical in nature. Most of us have some sort of legit excuse for our anxiety, to the point where it's one of the largest clinically diagnosed disorders, resulting in massive amounts of medication being pumped into the world. Hundreds of years ago, something like Xanax never existed. So how did men and women who feared being eaten by a lion cope? Well, they weren't popping Xanax, that's for sure, but what they did was face their fear. They took action even though they were afraid because it was a matter of life and death survival. If they didn't learn to accept the fear penetrating every ounce of their being, they might not have survived. They didn't give up trying to provide for their families because the alternative was always death, either via starvation or getting eaten. I'm pretty sure most of us don't have to worry about a hyena, a wild goat, or a hamster eating us. Instead, to us, losing money or a significant other can feel equivalent to losing a limb. It can be devastating. So we feel the fear and stay in the same routine, doing the same things we've always done, staying in the same career, dating the same types of people, and never going beyond our own limitations because, in our heads, the fear of failure is greater than risking it. We play it safe. Our fears eventually subside and nothing changes, except for the fact that the stress and anxiety from the unchanged situation keeps festering within us. We don't feel the fear anymore temporarily, but we're still in a perpetual state of stress, anxiety, and inner turmoil that will eventually seep its way outwards. This can create change, yes, like being fired because we cursed out our boss, divorced because we cheated on our spouse, or even jail in extreme cases because we were so fueled up that we commit something unlawful, find a new interest in heroin, or act aggressively out of character. Some of us live in a constant state of fight or flight mode, which is unnatural for our bodies. I'm not saying you're going to turn into a serial killer overnight in any sense, even serial killers have their reasons, some of which we don't understand and most likely stem from some sort of trauma or pent up aggression. Fight or flight is there for protection, to help us when we're in danger, like being chased by a wild animal or a person with a knife trying to attack us, but it's a mechanism that's made for short bursts, not a constant in our lives. Once it remains constant, everything is thrown off, from our hormones to our heart rhythm to our breathing. It then can eventually affect us physically and lead us down a path of eventual disease. Is it possible that it's our intuition or a gut feeling telling us not to do something? Legitimate fear is based on feeling. This is that initial thought of feeling coming from the depths of our soul saying, uh-uh, not for you, while illegitimate fear usually comes across as a hopeless thought. It's when we tell ourselves, you're not good enough for this. You're too inexperienced for that. You'll always be poor. A gut feeling usually acts like a lightning fast impulse while illegitimate fear tends to linger in our heads. For the most part, our intuition is spot on while our mind tends to have fluctuating results when it comes to change. Our mind often likes to dangle on the edge of our comfort zone, hanging on for its last shred of life. So think about this the next time you're fearing something. Is it because you truly believe that you'll lose your car, your house, and every penny to your name? Possibly, but chances are you won't. Unless you're already living in a cardboard box with one dollar in your pants pocket and a hurricane came by and the only dollar to your name got so soaked while you were wading in flood water that it basically dissolved in your pocket, you'll be okay. Even then, there's always a way out. If you tell yourself that there's no hope, then there's no hope. You're closed off to even the shred of possibility up your sleeve. On the other hand, if you give yourself the benefit of the doubt and know in your heart that the world will provide, maybe not in such a superficial sense where tens of thousands of dollars will miraculously float down from the heavens right onto your lap, but in other ways, it will. You might observe a gentle soul giving you the coat off his back or a bakery owner donating his unsold biscuits to a shelter nearby. 
If you think and assume the world is full of bad people and bad things, then this will become your reality. If, on the other hand, you see light in the darkness, you'll start observing more positive things in your life. So, in essence, if the head says yes, you've got a 50-50 shot at it being right, but if the heart says yes, it's probably right.